Right, Dean, anybody can tell that you were very, uh, you were a professional professional. Now, do you actually love horse racing and the buzz of betting, or is it now just a cold, calculated business transaction? Um, I do, uh, you know, to go to the races like if Alison and I went, not that we do, to be fair, we haven't been for a couple of years, but I would enjoy a day at the races like with Alison and myself. But no, it's it's hardcore. It's hardcore, cold, calculated. I'm going to win yours, you want to win mine. And that's it, you know what I mean? And if we can, you know, if we can get a percentage of what we turn over, then I'm happy. It ain't all success stories, Simon, I assure you. That's quite refreshing to hear somebody say that because I think people forget that that's what it's all about. They want our money, we want your money, whoever we and they are. Uh, now, you said earlier that your edge is information. Now, why would somebody tell you and not just benefit for themselves? Um, listen, when you say information, it's not, they're good judges. Listen, bookies, bookies don't want to know anyone who's half clever. They don't want to know them. All I want to know is those that are half clever and above. That's all I want to know. And, you know, and if I can help them get their money on, I will. And, you know, there's people that I've dealt with for many, 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 many years, and I would be frightened of life without them because they're such prolific winners. And I follow them in on a, I wouldn't say a daily basis, but a weekly basis. But it ain't information as such. They're just very good judges. You know, listen, you get these odds compilers. Why bookies have odds compilers is beyond me. Totally and utterly beyond me. I don't get it. I don't understand it. Why pay someone? One firm goes up, they all follow, and then they rely on the public to put to tell them if they're right or wrong. And if you if they think you are for you ain't getting a bet anyway. So why not bookies? Why not just to be seen to stand by your convictions just slightly rather than just fobbing? Remember, it's your livings, the traders I'm talking about, it's your livings as much as anyone. And I'm sure that, I mean, getting rid of the punters as quick as you do, eventually it's got to come to a time when you own it, there won't be none left. But I don't know, listen. I've only got another 10, 15 years, and it? it won't matter anymore. Now, you met, are there a underground sort of network of bookies that are prepared to take on people like you or take your business? Because when you look at, I mean, you know, the figures that you can get on if you are, like you say, half a winner, are pretty small on a lot of these online companies. So is there like an underground network that the normal people like me wouldn't know about? Um there would be an underground network of people putting on but there wouldn't be an underground network of private bookies if you should say it all ends up more or less in the big firms satchels somehow um invariably um what am i trying to say it does all you know it does all then filter up back you know it's no secret we'd use people, we'd slip people in. There's risks come with that. The risks I could have bought a very, you know, the risks of getting knocked, what I've been knocked for in winning bets, would buy a considerable house for someone. But listen, that's part and parcel of it, you know what I mean? It's, it still hurts, but you know, I'm, I've got all them people put it on there, you know, I, you know, I, I asked the likes of Christian White to help me put bets on for me. Absolute gentleman. GW Sports, they bet at the races. Great outfit. Understand the game more than most. More than most, they understand the game. And and clever boys, the lot of them. Right, you're a family man. Totally. You've got a wife and lovely kids. and So yep. how, how... Right, you're comfortable now. But how's that profession sat with supporting a young family back in you know when you were first starting out 
there has been time, Simon, when I've I've come home working for the Styles family and done me three hundred quid, absolutely sick. And I always used to you drive a lot to be a long drive home, and I'd be thinking, I wish I was a postman, stress free. But then I suppose it that wouldn't that wouldn't be exciting enough for me, would it? I I, I need excitement. So, so when you've had a terrible day, and I imagine there's been worse days than that in more Oh, yes. Years, oh, yes. Can you leave a particularly dad, bad day behind and sort of sit down with the family and forget about it? Impossible. Sulk like a baby. Sulk like a baby, mate. There's no better loser than me, mate. I am the governor at it. So you've had another Not better loser, time. sorry. I should say there's no worse loser than me. I am the governor. I am the worst loser you'll ever, ever come across. So you've had to have an understanding family throughout the years then? Oh, they know when I've lost. So was, Which is, at the moment, is quite a regular occurrence. So was there ever a time when it, it got so bad you thought, I've got to turn this in seriously? I mean, you never became a um, man. Right, last year... No, was it last year? Last year? It, it went really, you know... Listen, I, 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 I'm only there to see what's to back what I hear is fancied and if the price is right. If the bookies get the prices right, we don't play. We only want to play when we think they're wrong. There was a stage last year when it was literally, went three weeks, didn't put a cop in the book. And I did, that was for the first time I've said to Alison, I said like, this is a waste of time, this. You know, I, I'm I'm gonna get out of this, and my uh, and a friend of ours had a business up to sell, selling fruit and veg. I'm gonna give him a little, a little. What's the word? What's the word when you plug? I'm gonna give my son a little plug now. He's got a company now. It's called Valentine's Fruit and Veg, and they deliver. The fashion in the offices these days is to have veg uh, fruit delivered to your office. Well, that's what my son does. Plus, he does deliver vegetables to golf clubs, etc., etc., etc. But, you know, that is what he does. So, any big firm out there watching this and you're looking to get fruit delivered to your office, he's your man. That's good value, fruit and veg. Now, it's interesting there. This is not, this is going to catch you out because I haven't mentioned it on the questions. You talked about prices. Now, so value is obviously a big part. So, somebody somewhere tells you what a value price the fact the yes. is. Now, I know you, you're not active on Twitter and things like that, but no. there's often big rows on there about if a horse is a 7-1 to one shot and it's 11-2, to two, you don't back it. If it's a 10-1 to one shot, you have double on there. Is that your sort of business? No, nah, no. Nah. We'll have, if they put up seven and we want to take seven, we would have... Listen, by the, well, the time we finish, no one seven. Does, you know, we would take the seven every single place that is possible on this planet Earth to take seven to one, we would take. But it's opened up 11 to 2, so you just leave it alone? What are you saying, Simon? Are you saying, would I trade out of it? or No, I'm just saying... If oh, if it was... If the horse was... Um, listen, if we thought it was going to be 4, no, we would take 11 to 2. You know, I mean, and see, I mean, I've backed horse this morning. I've took... I've took 6 to 1. Yeah, I think, without looking, I think it's currently a 3 to 1 chance, and I'd fully expect it to go even less. So is the game trading out of those sort of bets? Listen, if you can take 10 to 1, even money chances, do it every day of the week if you can. Because you will win, I promise you. Right, and there's good advice there from a professional. People on Twitter take note. Likewise, likewise, if you're a bookie and you lay evens the 10 to 1 chance, you will also win. So... It's price is key. It is key. You know what I mean. And you can. That's that's why bookies get the needle so much. When we take seven, and the next thing, it's four. But listen, we don't make the prices. You guys make the prices. And the odd bit is getting the price right. Well, yeah, but listen, we ain't right all the time. They only remember the times we are right. Right. So, Dean, what would a typical working day entail for you? Um. 8.30, I'd come sit in my little office here and I would talk to Christian's man. I'd confide in him, uh, you know, what's fancied. And we've got a jumps man. I would ring him. 
an old RC's opinion. We have a guy who does a form for us, who would have been um, a compiler many years ago for for the firms, and we follow him religiously. And listen, very clear. They're, they're just clever guys. Clever, 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 clever guys. So then and they that. put and they put more work into it, my ad, than the firms do. Hence, you know, we go and ask for a, bet, a race on Saturday, and you get told that uh, no, 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 we haven't looked at that race yet. Well, why have you put the prices up? Why have you put the prices up? If you haven't looked at it, why? There is there is an answer, boys. There is an answer to this question. If you don't like laying them prices. Don't put the prices up. If you don't want to bet on a maiden hurdle in Ireland, don't price it up. Go and work at one o'clock. First race is two, two o'clock. Everyone's happy. I'd be confident, whatever way round they done it, however they restricted you getting on, not getting on, I'd be confident in us making it pay. Yeah, 